Bible. Genesis chapter number 14. I want to show you something here this evening uh, while you're finding your places there. Uh, I do want to remind you of the services next Sunday. Uh, bring, we've got a big day planned for next week. Really looking forward to it. Make sure. Uh, remember that about these microphones? All right. Uh, make sure this is on good. We'll, we'll start here in just a minute tonight. Genesis chapter 14. I want to show you what the Bible talks about about um, uh, first mention. There is in the Bible what we call the law of first mention. And um, that means uh, the first time something's mentioned in the Bible that usually sets a precedent for how that thing is used throughout the Bible. Now, the, number, the, the thing I want to talk about tonight, the first time in the Bible this word is used. Genesis 14, look at verse number 4. Twelve years, see that? They served Cheddar Laomer as a wicked king. And in the thirteenth year, they rebelled. That is the first time in the Bible the number thirteen is mentioned. And it said the 13th year they rebelled. Now there's something to that. When somebody, when you turn 13, suddenly you think you know everything in the world and you got all the answers. I remember when I was 13. I remember when I was 13. And, uh, and you, you think, Lord have mercy, I know everything in the world. Nobody can tell me nothing. And uh, get my mics on, please. Uh, and uh, you, 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 you won't let nobody tell you nothing because you think you know everything. And so we're going to show you tonight, what, and I'm going to preach on that subject. That's the title of my sermon, Rebellion. Rebellion. The word rebellion. You're to all these rebellious kids, and I'm going to ask you tonight, while you listen carefully, I'm going to ask you tonight, are you in rebellion? Just rebellion. Now, that means this. To resist or refuse authority or uh, control. How many kids heard everybody said, I don't want nobody control. She tries to control me. They try to control me. Well, I got news for you. As long as you're here on this earth, somebody's going to be bossing you around. When you're little, when you're young, uh, your parents have authority over you. They're paying bills. They're putting food in your belly. They're putting clothes on your back. So, so your parents are in control of you. They have a right to tell you. You say, well, my mama don't have a right to, to tell me nothing. Yes, she does too. Whoever, whoever's paying the bills has a right to tell you what you can do, what you can't do, where you can go, how long you can stay, what time you've got to be home. You don't like that, do you? But they're paying the bills. They're paying the bills. Your parents have control of you. Your teachers at school have control over you. I mean, they, they just do. That's all there is to it. You have to obey them. If you don't, you get in trouble. The police, the police out there, the cops out there, they say, hey, you got to sit down here. You can't go so fast. You can't do so many things. You can't go across over there. You can't park there. You can't go here. Uh, are they trying to control? No, they have authority over us. They have authority over me. The pastor in the church, people don't believe that, but the Bible does teach that the pastor in the church, I'm not saying this because I'm a preacher. I don't want it. But they have a certain amount of authority in your life. And you ought to be a member of a good Bible-believing church and submit yourself to the leadership of that pastor. So we have spiritual leaders. We have mom and dad, physical, take care of us, that are, control, uh, that, that are in authority over us. We have the police. We have our school teachers. All these people are over you when you're young. You know why? You know why you have big people telling you what to do? Because you ain't got enough sense to know what you're supposed to do yourself. And, and sometimes they don't either. <laughs> Ain't that right? And so tonight I'm going to talk about rebellion. And rebellion is this. No! Rebellion is this. I don't want to. Rebellion is... Ugh, she makes me so mad. Rebellion is... Ugh, she drives me crazy. Rebellion is... Look, if, you can, if your mom tells you something, let me show you how you can rebel. Eye rollers. I'm going to buy y'all some shirts that says eye rollers. That'd be a cool idea. I'll get them and put them in Gatlinburg. Eye rollers. 
Uh, our rollers one, our rollers two, a little sister, littler sister, littler sister, our roller. Every time anybody tells you something, it's just, oh. man, if there's anything a parent can't stand, it's for them to pay your bills and tell you stuff and pr- put food on your table and you ask them nicely, you ask them nicely to do something and you roll them big ugly eyes at them. That's right, that's right. Uh, that's, uh, you don't want nobody controlling you. Uh, you don't want to be a... Now, civilization is in danger, old people, listen to this, when a nonconformist uh, are in control. Civilization is in danger when people who have never learned to obey are in charge and in command. We're in trouble. When those who have never took orders are now giving them. When we raise up a generation that have never learned how to obey and then all of a sudden they're running the country, we're in a mess. I'm telling you, the next generation, if there is one, when, I, when my generation's gone and y'all get up in charge, I hate to see the mess this world's going to be in when this generation is in charge. You talk about crazy. I mean, it's going to be, it's gonna be a mess. Now, I want to I show you some things out of the Bible tonight. We're going to do a little Bible study. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to talk about some things that you need to see. Then the Bible, the, the Bible said... Uh, in the Old Testament, that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Isn't that something? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. One girl comes, she said, Brother Danny, there's a witch at my school. I said, really? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, she's, she has white stuff all over her face. She paints her fingernails black. She paints her lips black. She wears all black clothes. She has a pentagram on her, on her sweatshirt. She's witch! I'm scared of her. She's full of the devil. Now, the Bible says rebellion, what I'm preaching about tonight, is the same as witchcraft. So that means every time your mom or dad tries to get you to listen to them and you just roll your eyes and know, you are a witch. <laughs> or worse words. You, you are a witch. You're awful. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I mean, you're a brat. You're a, you're a witch. You say, oh my goodness, we got a witch in the choir. Yeah, we sure do. We got a witch in the Sunday school class. That's right. Uh, just remember that. It's the same. Listen, it's the same as going out there uh, following the Ouija board around, looking for Slender Man uh, to pop out behind the back. Of the, of the, it's the same thing. It's witchcraft. Now, I'm going to show you some people in the Bible to a, a boy and a girl who were full of rebellion. First of all, let me illustrate what I want to say, all right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to illustrate tonight what I want to say. Typical, typical, typical teenager tonight. And uh, I want you to look at this tonight. If you went to the average teenager's home tonight, you would see, uh, you know, you would see this. Carly, Carly, look at this mess. I get so tired of seeing all of your stuff thrown all over the floor. You really need to clean this up. Well, I have an idea. Don't look. There you go with that attitude again. What did you learn in church about obeying your parents and being respectful? Yes, Mother dear. Now, you've just seen just a little tiny bit of what rebellion is. The thing about that, you say, well, well, I don't want my mama telling me nothing. Well, the problem with that is, look at me. The problem with that is you grow up thinking, she can't tell me. Then you look to the police and say, they can't tell me. And then you look at God and say, he ain't going to tell me. That's how you wind up in hell when you leave this world. You don't want to go to hell. Hell is an awful place. And every one of us is going to heaven or hell. The way you go to hell is rebel against God. Basically what you do when you're rebelling, basically what you're saying is, God, I know you're the creator of the universe, and I know you made the sun, and you made the stars, and you made the planet, but I know better than you do. 
You know all the hairs on my head. You know how many atoms there are in the universe. But I know better how I will live my life than you do. So I'm just going to do what I want to do. That's what you're saying to God. Two, two kids I want to show you in the Bible. The first one is in 2 Samuel 13. Look at it, if you would, please. 2 Samuel 13 tonight. And let me show you a young man. This is for you guys. Now, uh, girls, don't you listen to? I'm going to tell you about a young guy in the Bible. 2 Samuel 13, wouldn't you know it. And this boy's name is Absalom. This boy was the king's son. His daddy was King David. That means this boy was very popular and he was very rich. Everybody knew this boy. Look what it says about him. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, look at verse uh, uh, 34, and it said something about Absalom fled. That's his rebellion. Look at chapter 14 and let it describe him. But in all Israel, see verse 25, chapter 14, verse 25, but in all Israel there was none so much to be praised as Absalom for his beauty. The Holy Spirit said that boy had beauty. That means he was good looking. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. That's a good looking guy. When he pulled his head, for his every year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it, weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight, according to our our measurements of a shekel, every year he got a haircut. Now listen, listen to me now. Absalom was the king's son. His daddy was absolute king over the whole country. His name was David. Now King, king David's son, Absalom, he, not only was he rich, he had everything he wanted, and not only was he popular, he was the king's son. Everybody said, oh my goodness, there's Absalom. Oh, there's Absalom. And all the girls went, oh, there's Absalom. I mean, he was a looker, buddy. I, I'm telling you, he, I, that boy, he was dreamy. I'm telling you, I mean, the boy had money, he had fame, and he had looks. All three. I mean, Justin Bieber, get out of here, you little nut. I mean, I mean, you're talking about uh, 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 whatever that other dude's name is. Uh, y'all talk about all the time, that little... Little, little boy, Zach, Ephron, Hebron, uh, Teflon, uh, something like that. Uh, get out of here, man. We're talking about, we're talking about uh, uh, Absalom. Absalom's hair was probably, probably jet black, and he had big, bushy, long hair of curls and curls. And when he cut, he didn't get but one haircut a year, and it was six pounds of hair. Now, a box, box like this, well, got a haircut, and it was had six pounds of hair in it. And he pulled it once a year. Now, I'm telling you, buddy, that boy was a looker. And the Bible said this. The Bible said from the top of his head down to the sole of his feet, there was no blemish in him. His skin, his skin didn't look like the pavement out there on a dirt road. Like, like some of these guys. I mean, his, I mean, he didn't have old nasty, dried up skin with, with, with zits all over him. And, I mean, he didn't go around popping them, you know, and squirting mayonnaise out uh, uh, toward everybody. He, he didn't look like that at all. No, 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 no. No, I mean, this boy, his skin was perfect. You know, if you find anybody in this world, you say, well, they're good looking, or that boy, he's handsome or whatever, there'll be something wrong with them. He might have pretty hair and eyes, but his nose is that long. You know, he might have a, a nice-looking face, but his knees, my daddy said, look like a rope with a knot tied in it. His legs do. Uh, uh, he might have a perfect physique and muscles and all of that stuff, but, he, but, he's, but he, his hair all fell out. He, he might have perfect muscles and perfect hair and perfect eyes and perfect uh, everything else, uh, but... There's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with every single one of them. Not Absalom. Not Absalom. From the sole of his feet to the top of his head, the Lord said there was no blemish in him. 
I mean, you talk about a heart throb. When Absalom come through town on his fast horse, every girl in there thought, man, I would give anything in the world. And you know, that's a bad combination. A bad combination is being good looking and have money and be popular. That's a bad combination. And you know what happened? He had a, he had a sister and one of his, his half-brothers and half-sisters, a bunch of the family there, and his brother Amnon raped the, his sister. And when that happened, he got out there and he got these guys around there. He said, we're going to kill him. I want that guy dead. And sure enough, he got them all together and said, as soon as you see Amnon, y'all go over and kill him. One of them said, he's coming down the road over there. Let's go get him. And they took knives and clubs and guns, whatever they took back then, and beat, beat Amnon to death and killed him. Well, somebody went and told King David. They said, did you know that your son, Absalom, had Amnon killed? And obviously, David got mad. And Absalom rebelled. And you know what Absalom did, kids? He took off. He said, there ain't nobody going to run my life. That old man ain't going to tell me what to do. I'll do what I want to do. He, he said, I got plenty of money. Got my own bank account. I don't need you. I don't need you, Mom. I don't need you, Dad. I don't have to listen to your advice. I, you don't know what you're talking about anyway. Your kids have this idea that mom and daddy's from the last generation and that you walk to earth with dinosaurs and you know that, uh, that nobody even could have electricity uh, in your day and time. And they have, you all have this idea that your mom and dad don't have no idea what you go through and what you face and everything, but they do. It wasn't that long at all till they was in your shoes. Well, Absalom said, listen, I don't care what you think. I'm out of here. And he ran away from home and left home. And you know what happened? I'm not got time to tell you all the whole story tonight. But Absalom wound up in a battle down there. And they come down through there. And the enemy come in there is going to kill him. And he was riding his horse down there like that. And that hair that he thought was so great and beautiful went under an oak tree. And that limb got a hold of his head and hair like that right there. And hung him. And his donkey run out from under him. And he's hanging there by his head. And they come in and throw these darts. That's how they kill people back then. They had these darts about that long. and sharp like a knife on the end. They go whoosh, like that. And pow, four of them. I think three or four of them. Hit him right through the heart and killed that boy. You know why? He rebelled against his daddy. He said, my daddy don't know. I know better. They ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. And I'm going to tell you all something here tonight. I don't care if you're five years old, if you're 15 years old, when you get that attitude of, I'm going to do what I want to do. They're not telling me what to do. You're fixing to get yourself in a lot of trouble that you might never get out of. He rebelled. He got in trouble. I mean, his, he got in a big mess and never did get out of it. Let me tell you about a girl. Take your Bible, turn to Genesis 34. Genesis thir chapter 34. And let's look right here at a young lady. All you young ladies, here's your story. The Bible covers everything. Everything. Here, let me show you a teenage girl in the Bible. Genesis chapter 34. And this girl's name was Dinah. Cool name, huh? It really is. That's a pretty cool name. Dinah. And she was a very beautiful young lady. Grand... Uh, uh, Jacob's daughter, Jacob's daughter, and the Bible said in verse 1, Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Notice how your King James Bible hits all up to date and ahead of us in human nature. Stop right there. Hold your place. She come in one day. She said, Mom, I need to ask you something. Her mother. And Leah said, Yes, what is it? I can tell you're wanting to do something. Mom, I've done cleaned my room. I've done got all my clothes packed all up. I, 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 everything's clean. Can I ask you something? She said, what is it? She said, a uh, couple of the girls at school is having a pajama party this Friday night. And I want to know if I can go. And Leah said, now, honey, you know we don't let you just go off with people. Who is it? Mom, you know them. They go to church. Ain't that what they always say? She said, what church? Oh, it don't really matter. It don't have to be just exactly like ours. How do you know they go to church? They said they did. They went Christmas. She said, 
Honey, what are y'all going to be doing? Mama, we're not going to be doing nothing. We're going to pop popcorn, watch some movies. We're just going to be three or four of us, and we're just going to have a good time. And Mama asked the very first question that ever Mama asked. What is it? Are there going to be any boys there? So you hear all these women in there say that? Is there going to be any boys there? No! What do you think we are? A bunch of tramps like them Cartracians on TV? And she said, no, honey, I just want to make sure. Now, you don't, you don't need to be around no boys. And in her mind, she's saying, oh, gosh. Oh, mama. Oh, boy, like you ain't got enough sense. You think I'm crazy. You think I'm still five years old. That's the way you know you're getting that attitude wrong. As soon as you start like, here you go, treat me like I'm five years old again. That's the way you know the devil's getting in you. They ain't none of you ever said that, have you? I ain't no you ever said, I'm not a kid anymore. That is the sign of rebellion right there. That's the first step. And Donna said, but I want to go, I want to go. Please, Mom, please. I'll call you as soon as I get there, and I'll call you at 11 o'clock, and you can come check, check on me. All we're going to do is watch some movies. And I'll, hold your finger on that verse now. Uh, and, and Mama, it's all going to She says, all right. But I'm telling you, if you're not telling me the truth, honey, I'll beat you in the next week when you get home. I'll wear you out. And she said, uh, she said, I want mama. I'll promise. Thank you, thank you, mommy. I thank you. You're the best mommy in the world. Mwah. And well, she took off out the door like this, and there she went. She said, are they going to let you go? Yeah, yeah, let's go. So she gets this friend. She gets this friend. She gets this friend. And they get their stuff, and they get their blanket, and they all go, and they all go in. And, hey, is your mom going to be here? Mom's going to the store, and we're going to be in here all by ourselves. Can y'all still hear me out there? I hope my microphone's working. Hey, how are you? Hey, who are you? Hey, who are you? They're all in there getting ready for the party. Be quiet in there. They're in there, in there and then about that time, uh, Selena's mom goes to the store. That's where they're at, Selena's house. You know Selena Gomez, the, the, the devil woman? They said, I said she sold her soul for the rock god. You know what I'm talking about? Satanist. Uh, she, they was at her house. And Donna was rich. And she's at Selena's house. And they said, pop popcorn. Pops popcorn. Uh-oh, let's read the next verse. There's an old saying that we used to say when we was growing up. Where the girls are, won't be long till what? Buzzards come around, something that stinks. That's the right illustration. But, uh, <laughs> verse 2. And she, when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Hivite, prince of the country, another rich kid, saw her, took her, lay with her, defiled her. You couldn't get it more update in a in a, in a counselor's off of getting paid $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. Saw her, took her, lay with her, defiled her. And they really want to get married down there in verse 5 and 6 and 7. Got it a little backwards there, didn't you? You don't supposed to lay with them till you're married. But Dinah went out there, and this guy saw her. That's why you girls naturally want to dress bad. When you go out and you dress bad, something you show your body and everything, that's, you're built that way to attract male attention. And the Bible said that boy saw her, saw her, saw her. Wow, I think I'm in love. Now, is he in love? Yes or no? No! No. And, and he goes over and he says, Baby, you're the, you're the best looking thing I've ever seen in my life. I ain't ever. He told that to the last 15 girls he was looking at. So, did you know guys have them lines memorized, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had girls tell me, they said, Well, he told me, Oh, I'd, co I'd, fly, I'd walk to the moon and back for you. And this other girl says, yeah. He told me the same thing. <laughs> hey, listen, a little, a little, they're full of the devil. <laughs> and you know what? He said, Oh, darling. I've never felt like this. Uh, yeah, whatever. 
Yes, he had. Now, here's your problem, girls. I'm going to tell you what your problem is. I ain't got time to preach on this tonight. But here's your problem. I know you little ones, you got a long way to go, I hope, and pray to God. Uh, but I'm telling you, you bigger ones here tonight, let me say something for you. Your big problem is, is when you like this guy, and he starts coming on to you, and he starts bragging on you, and he starts telling you how pretty you are, and you start feeling something. And you feel something very strong and very powerful. And very, I mean, it's almost uh, more than you can stand. And you think that's love, that's where you get in trouble. That ain't love. That's physical attraction. You can feel that with many different people. That don't mean you're in love. And most people go ahead and mess up or even get mad when they think that's what it is. That burns out like a fire burning. It and then it dies down after a while. Dinah got in trouble. When they found out what happened, it caused a bunch of people to get killed. She went to her and she said, Selena's mom, you know, she's about hip. A little, you know, she, she wore skirts up to here, you know, and painted herself up like a Jezebel. And she was single and you know, she was available, and, and she said, what do you think about him? She said, go, girl, go, girl. Man, if I had a chance for that boy, he's popular. Go, go, go. And gave her some bad advice, and Dinah got messed up. And Dinah got messed up. Girls, listen to me. Listen to me. Please listen to me. That's my wife, Kelly, sitting right over there. Ask her. We've had people in our home over and over and over and over and over. Listen to me. Listen to me. That got messed up, thought they fell in love. Next thing you know, they're drinking. Next thing you know, they got, they're taking pills. Next thing you know, they're shooting up. Next thing you know, they're, they're, they're doing all kinds of things. They're on drugs. Drugs is ruining more girls. Listen, there's girls just like y'all here tonight. You teenage girls in here, there's girls just like you that start down that road. It's love. It's sex. It's rock and roll. It's drugs. It's drinking. And you are headed down a road that's going to ruin your life. It's rebellion. If you've got that much brain in your head, you would listen to those that are in authority and say, I'm not going to rebel against God and ruin my life like that. Not going to do it. I don't care how good it seems. I don't care how good it feels. I'm not going to ruin my life. I ain't got time to tell you the whole story. But Dinah's life was really messed up. You see, boys give love for lust. And girls give lust for love without being so plain about it. What causes rebellion? What causes rebellion? Well, first of all, a bad home. If you're in a bad home, that spirit of rebellion will rub off on you. Did you hear that music she was listening to a while ago? You are not going to be an obedient child and a right kind of a kid listening to that kind of music. It don't go together. It's impossible. It speaks rebellion. That's what we call, you know, Throw something through the glass music. I got names for all them different kinds of music. There's kill your mama music. There's, there's uh, you know, uh, bebop music. There's bang your head on the table music. There's all kinds of music that makes you want to do certain things. And the music that you listen to control. The music that's in your home. I went into a home on bus route, not yesterday. I went yesterday, but last Saturday... I went into a home, and I opened this door, and I walked in, and there was bad stuff on the TV, bad. And I just turned my back like this, and I was talking to the man, and the woman went over here and stood between me and the TV so I couldn't see it. And there's two little boys out there running around about that high. And I said, if you're in a home like that, if you're in a home where there's bad music and movies, and there's nothing you can do about it, listen, we've let bus kids out before, seen them run in the house and when they opened up the door the party would be going on and the man up standing on the coffee table dancing in the middle of the living room and that kid have to go into that atmosphere that's where you parents in here tonight you better you better better watch your attitude real careful before you start judging these kids too heavy the hell some of them has to live in some of them have seen their daddy hit their mama some of them have seen their mama get cussed out sitting right here tonight and I don't even know all these kids 
We had a hundred of them here about this morning. And we got a lot of them here tonight. Some of them have seen things that me and you would never even see. Listen, that has an effect on you. It'll mess your mind up. What you've got to do is you've got to make up your mind. God, I'm going to get in my room. I'm going to get my Bible. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to live right. I'm going to serve God. And listen, the world is out there, y'all. It's after ever blessed one of you. I thought about look, Daxter for there. He's, you know, he's on YouTube. And, and you can see him racing on there and everything. And, and his name's up there and everything. I, I pray for him every day that God will protect him. They don't know how many times I prayed for them on this trip. But when they're not gone, when they're not gone, I pray for them every day. We pray, Lord, put a hedge around y'all. Put a hedge around you. Don't let the devil get Because the devil, you know, you, you see them kids down there in that school that got shot the other day in, in Florida. And they just went to school on a normal day and never did come back home. I mean, that could happen tomorrow in Hickory or Morgan. And let's pray it don't. But the only thing that's going to protect you is your mom and dad praying for you and the Lord. Dinah got in trouble. And messed her life up. Rebellion. Rebellion. You're like that little boy. His daddy told him, said, sit down. He said, no. He said, sit down. And he said, no. And he said, son, you better sit down right now. I'm fixing to wear you out. And he goes, no. And his daddy looked at him and he said, I'm sitting down on the outside. I'm standing up on the inside. And you know what? Some of y'all got that attitude. You do what she says, but you standing up on the inside, ain't you? And you got it in your mind, just as soon as I can get out of here, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. And let me tell you something. You're going to be a fool and get yourself in an early grave or in a rehab somewhere is what's going to happen to you. These kids sitting right here tonight in five years will be in a crack house or be on drugs or something terrible if you don't start listening to somebody that's over thought. You can, listen, it ain't just a place to have fun. The life ain't... I remember when I was growing up, teenagers rebel against society. Conformity. We're nonconformists when you're a teenager. I did. I did. We done stuff just to make old people get mad. I don't know what makes you do that. Did y'all did y'all ever do that? I remember doing that when I was thirteen. We are bell against adult authority. We're non-compliance. I remember my band, the first band I played in. I was twelve years old. Twelve year old has no business being in a rock band, but I was. And me and two other boys my age. I might have been 11. I'm not sure. I was 12. They was 12. And my sister gave us the name of our band. First band, it was We Three. W-E-E, We. Like little, We Three. My sister Sandy named our band. And I mean to tell you, I mean, we'd go and we'd play at the school dance. We'd play at the school dance, y'all. And, uh, and, and it was, and all the people would go crazy. I was 12 years old. And we'd just do little old stuff like Like that, you know, stuff like that, and everybody, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, you know, everybody gone surfing, surfing USA, you know, junk, junk like that, and I remember we had a, we had what we called a concert, I guess you call it a concert, and this concert was at school one day, and they let talent show something, and they let our band play in the, in the auditorium in our school. I didn't know what I was doing, I was stupid. And you know, we had, my, hair, my hair was real. Finally, come right around here like his. We got, they got pictures of me on the phone, looking like, like an idiot. Looked like him, but he was real, real long. Looked like that. And uh, and I remember, I remember sitting there, and I we got up and we cranked them amplifiers up, and we started playing the wipeout. You know, you know, wipeout. And buddy, we started playing that. And the old people went wild, and I remember this one woman. She was, we, oh, she went like this, and she held her ears and went out the door like this. And I loved it. I thought that's the best publicity we could possibly get. I said, "Woo! We've hit the big time. We've offended the old people." Now, what is it that makes you? Did you know that's what rock groups still do to this day? 
rappers, a bunch of old dirty mouth rappers. They need, they need somebody to take a big jar of Clorox and soap and squirt it. Well, take them to the car wash. They got things to squirt it in their throat. Clean that trash out. And, buddy, we, we thought we offended the old people. We've arrived. What makes a kid like that? Let's just do something to tick them off. <laughs> you know? What makes you do stuff like that? Bad music. Bad music not just words. It's bad music. And it's not just music. It's bad words. Sometimes the music is just da, 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 all of the kids with the pumped up kick. You know, like that, you, know what that, you know what that's talking about? I'm going to shoot you at school. Run, run, run. You can't outrun my gun. You better run, run, run. Can't outrun my bullet. You see, the music and the words itself gets inside you. You say, well, I like it. I understand. I liked it too. The truth is, my flesh still likes music. But I am not going to let myself listen to it. I'm not. You know why? It makes you rebellious. That girl right there, a minute ago, that music, you ain't going to obey your parents and fill your head with that junk she's listening to a while ago. You ain't going to do it. You're going to be a mean, rebellious little brat. You get yourself in jail or something's going to happen to you. Bad friends. Bad friends. You know what got, what's your name, dying in trouble? Bad friends. You know what parents need to do? I feel sorry for you if you don't have, have your parents. And I know some of you don't. That's not your fault. But you got somebody you got somebody that cares about you or you wouldn't even be here tonight. Somebody keeps it. you got your bus workers. Your bus workers care about you. This church cares about you. Spend some time with your dad or with whoever's at work. You know, I, we put up a basketball goal at the house last summer, and, and I, I had this guy come there at the house, and he was helping me. And I went to the store. I went to Lowe's or somewhere and bought two or three bags of, Sacrete and put them in my forerunner and brought them home and I got a wheelbarrow I got a big old bucket of water five gallon bucket of water and a hoe and I poured that sacrate in that wheelbarrow and dumped some water in it and started mixing it up make concrete you know where I learned how to do that? watching my daddy do it I learned how to do that watching my daddy do it. See, and that's a good thing for you dads here. These kids, don't, they don't know how to do nothing. How would you learn how to do that? I just seen daddy do it. He mixed it up. He said, now, you don't pour too much water in there because once it gets too wet, I mean, ain't nothing, you can't go backwards. You, but you can always add some. Add a little bit, add a little bit. And I got it just about like peanut butter. And then I got it a little bit more, a little bit more. I mean, like gravy. Not a little thicker than real good gravy. And then I poured it in that hole and smoothed it over. And we put that thing down there and fixed my basketball goal. Now, you know what? I, lo- I watched my dad do that. I watch- dad taught me how to shoot a gun, shoot a rifle. He got me a rifle when I was five years old. Five years old, had 22. You say, is that that's the truth? I slept with that thing. I mean, I'd bust my mouth on it. I'd hold it in bed with me like that and sleep. I wasn't scared we was going to get robbed or nothing. I just liked my gun. And uh, Daddy taught me how to shoot it, taught me how to shoot a shotgun, how to clean a shotgun, how to handle a, a pistol. And my daddy never even went to school. He couldn't even read. But he knew how to work. He knew how to work. And you know what every one of you boys need to learn how to do? Y'all need to learn how to work right. with your hands. I mean, carry stuff. And all you parents here tonight, it ain't going to hurt them to make them work a little bit. Learn how to pick up stuff. Learn how to work. I'm not talking about five men. Huh? Have you ever noticed they'll pick up two things and say, I'm tired. They say, well, let's go outside. Okay, let's go. They got all kind of energy when it's time to play. But when you need them weeds cut or picked up, 
They said, I want to I want to run the weed eater. That looks like more fun. They want to do something that's fun, but don't want to do nothing that's real like it's listen, y'all need to get you need to get you some gloves and pull briars and weeds. I mean till you're tired, till your back hurts. Because every time you learn how to work, you're learning how to do something that might help you later on in life. Plus you're staying out of trouble. You're staying out of trouble. Y'all need to learn how to work. All you know how to do, some of you, is move them thumbs. Here's you every day of your life laying on the couch. You can move them thumbs 90 miles an hour. You know, you're an expert on thumb movement. But you, you couldn't dig two scoops with a shovel without feeling like you're going to die. That'll make you a rebel if you don't learn how to work. I'll say this and I'm through. Parents, keep them in revival. The best advice I can give you for your kids, get them in every service like this right here, camp meetings, revival, youth rally, that you can possibly give. People ask me, they said, how in the world do you raise kids? Now, I'll tell you what I'd do. If you, got my, you want my advice? I'd homeschool them and put them in a Christian school and I'd keep them in every good church service I can possibly get them in and keep them as far away from the wicked stuff of the world. They don't have to know every wicked, low-down, ungodly thing that's going on out there. They don't need to know all the perversion that's out there. Lord, they know enough already. In conclusion tonight, I'm through. I heard a story not too long ago. Here's about so many kids getting on drugs. I, that sermon I preached on crystal meth, it's on the internet. Like four different channels put that sermon on there. It's about taking pills and then getting on drugs. There have been 70,000 people watch that thing. I have no idea. I, didn't even, I don't even know how to put nothing on YouTube. 70,000 people turning it on, needing help. A girl called me last night and down yonder somewhere, oh, Hickory, needing help. She might be here tonight. I invite her. I don't know. She said, uh, um, oh, is that you? There you are. I saw you nodding. She called me last night. I was like, got friends. I'm glad y'all made it. About friends that have got on drugs, in trouble. And everybody here tonight knows somebody that's on drugs and in trouble. Now, what you need to do tonight is I want you to do this. You know the answer to rebellion? Surrender. Surrender. You say, all right, I, I get it, preacher. God is smarter than I am, so I'm going to say, all right, Lord, you are going to run my life. Not me. You are going to run my life. You, the dumbest kid in here is one that says, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I... You're the dumbest person in here. The smartest person in here is one that says, you know what? I think he's right. I'm going to let the Lord tell me what to do because I ain't smart enough to know what I you're the smartest one in here. The dumbest one in here is one that says, he just think, he ain't getting to me. I, I know what I'm going to do tonight when I get home. I'm going to get on the Internet, and I'm going to listen to my dirty music, and I'm going to cuss, and I'm going to raise Cain, and I'm going to lie, and I'm going to cheat. You're the dumbest person in here. The Bible said a fool. Fool. You're a fool in your folly. I heard about a girl who was in, a, uh, in school, and when she's 16 years old, this back years ago, her parents bought her a brand new Pontiac Trans Am. I don't even think they make Trans Ams anymore. But back then, back then the Trans Am was a hot car. Every kid wanted one. Brand new. And she drove to school. She's in high school. I think she's in 11th grade. And the school had a parking lot over here. And it, the school policy was you had to park over here in this parking lot, walk across the road, go into the school. And school policy rule, strict rule, once you've crossed that road, you could not go back for any reason. I don't care if you left your books, homework, you could not go back across that street once you crossed that street into the school. So she came and drove her brand new car to school Monday morning, parked that thing over there, come in and start saying, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's convertible. It's red. I got the leather seats. I've got the, I, everything. I mean, she was bragging. They said, oh, my goodness, let's go see it. Let's go see it. So it break. Her and three of her friends. Come on. They run across the street. There it is. 
Oh, my goodness. They was rubbing that thing. That's the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Can I see any? She opened it up. And they was all getting in there, you know, feeling the steering wheel, looking in the mirrors, checking out to see the, uh, the stereo system. And they, they were all checking everything out and, you know, looking at all that. And then one of them said, start it up. She put the key in there and started it. Vroom, vroom. Oh, my goodness. What's the next thing somebody said? Can we just go around the block? Just one time she said, I don't know, y'all. We've got to be back in 15 minutes. Oh, come on. Let's just go around the block. She said, let's go. Come on. And she was so excited. She went out, turned this block down, down south, Louisiana, Texas, where Interstate 10 is. And she run down the end of one street. Hadn't had her driver's license very long. Cut that corner and floored it. They said, whoa, I love it. She put that gas to that floor, took off down to the about 70 miles an hour. And that girl was an inexperienced driver. She come, they, had, they had one of them roads where they dead in, you know, and had one of them things on it. And she couldn't make that turn and turn like that. And that car flipped that way and over that fence and right smack in the middle of Interstate 10. And I'm telling you, a tractor and trailer come flying around. I know you don't think them tractor and trailers are going fast. I, was, I preached revival this week down in Randall, North Carolina. And every morning I run and I stay in a motel and I run. I had to run across the interstate, across a bunch of Lord, cars going every way, and I run right through them. I just do like this. And they stopped. Every one of them stopped. And, and I, I'd run through there, I'd see a car coming, and I'd go. And, and they stopped. They always, they didn't want to run over you. And, and I, I, go, I was on that bridge, I looked down like this, and them trucks were going. They looked like they was doing 300 miles an hour. You don't think 70 is fast. Do you get up and see one go right under you like that? And a tractor and trailer hit that car, and them four kids never even knew what hit them. You know what they did? They just broke the rules. They just broke the rules. They wasn't supposed to go back across that road. That don't seem like much, does it? And then they're in heaven or hell, and their life's over because they just broke the rules. You don't have to break a big rule. It can be just a little rule and get you in trouble. If you surrender tonight, your life will be a lot different. Let's look at this young lady. If she surrendered her life to the Lord, things might be a whole lot different. Things might be a whole lot different. Now listen to what she's listening to. Hey, your room's looking really good. Yeah, thanks, Mom. You know what? Um, I've actually been thinking a lot, and the Lord's been so good to me. We have a place to sleep, food, clothes. Thank you, Mom. I love you. Oh, I love you too, honey. God has been good to us. Amen. See, the atmosphere is different. The atmosphere is different. Hold it. The atmosphere is different. And you know what makes the atmosphere different? The heart gets right. The music's right. And the whole home changes. What's in your heart tonight? What's in your heart? I want you to stand and bow your head. Nobody's moving. Everybody stand, bow your head, please, and close your eyes. She's playing softly tonight on the piano. Let me ask you a question. Mama, daddy, boy, girl, how's things with you and the Lord? Your heads are bowed. Everybody bow your head, close your eyes, please, out of respect. She's playing softly. If you died tonight on the way home, would you be ready to meet the Lord? If you're here tonight and you've been saved, but you've been rebellious, you say, you know what, preacher? I need to get my life right. Why don't you come right now? Come on, that's right, that's right, come on, come on. You say, I've been having an attitude with my parents, and you know what, preacher? I want God to bless. That's right. Come on. We need somebody to pray with these kids. Some of you adults, come pray with a couple of them. I don't know if everybody here is saved. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Just get out of your seat. Come on, girls. 
Will you ladies pray with these girls over here? God speak into your heart. God speak into your heart. Is he? God speak into your heart. Why don't you come right now? Why don't you come right now? Come on, young man. It ain't going to hurt you. Girls, if you're not saved, why don't you come right now? Come on. You know if you died tonight on the way home that you'd go to heaven. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. Hell's an awful, awful place. Hell's a place where they're screaming and hollering and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why don't you come? Come on, come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. That's right. That's right. Boy, we got some kids coming up that's going to live right. They're not going to just follow the crowd. They ain't going to just follow the world. They ain't going to just do like everybody else is going to do. Come on, young lady. Come on. Come on, teenager. You're not here by accident tonight. God brought you here. Let's do business with the Lord. Come on. Let's do business with the Lord. Come on. Let's do business with the Lord right now. Let's do business with the Lord. Come on. Step out of your seat right now. Step out of your seat. Come on. Just step out of your seat. We're about done. You come on right now. Come on. Right now. Come on, right now. Step out of your seat and come right now. Let the Lord help you. You let the Lord help you. Come on, young lady. Step out. Obey God. Come on. Somebody will pray with you. Get your heart right with God before you leave tonight. Come on. Come on, right now. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on, right now. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. Amen. If you don't know you're saved, come on, right now. If you don't know you're saved, come on right now. Let the Lord help you. Let the Lord help you right now. Come on. Come on right now. Let him help you. Let him help you tonight. Some still praying. Let him help you tonight. Let him help you tonight. Come on. Come on. Let him help you tonight. Let him help you tonight. Come on. Come on. Let him help you tonight. Come on, young lady. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on, girls. Come on. Get your heart right. Get down here and get down on your knees and get your heart right. The Lord will help you if you'll let him. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just play just a few seconds while these still praying tonight. Got some over here getting right with the Lord. Amen. 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 God's done a work here tonight. He's done a work here tonight. You have no idea some of the mess some of these kids come out of sitting right in here tonight. Some of your parents need to pray for them. They need prayer. Lord, have mercy. It's a wonder they do as good as they do. It's a wonder. Amen. 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 Pray, girls. Y'all pray. You know, only you. Are you saved? Do you know if you died on the way home, you'd go to heaven? Do you know that? If you don't, get it settled tonight. Fix it up. Get it fixed up tonight. Get it fixed. I'm glad I did. I was a teenager when I got saved. If I had to do over, I'd get saved a lot sooner. A lot sooner. Amen. One more verse. She's still praying. They're still praying here tonight. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Let's do this right.